Hey guys, George here, and um, what I'd like to do today is bring to you a video, uh, uh, an after action report uh, for Wacom Ryan number four, a promising start. Uh, in my previous video, I just did uh, turn one for the, uh, for the uh, German and Allied player. And how it looks like is that the Germans are off to a promising start. They took, uh, one group took a pa the path down here at one uh, movement factor each. The, uh, I quickly discovered that the Jagdpathers here are, have a very solid armor and uh, the AT guns and so are, so, uh, uh, and the 40 millimeter buffers can do diddly about them. Uh, and they could only get an effect if they fire in the rear. Um, the leader here since uh, orchards are not in effect, they're out of season, they only impede them by uh, virtue of being a hindrance. He's on the second level hill with a half squad and an MMG raining fire down on the Americans. Now, before I go any further, I did do one mistake. I didn't really took two German player turns, so I went back in my log, restarted it, and, uh, and uh, took it from there. I already have one AT gun that's out of order. So I'm going to go down the log and I'm going to size the screen so you can see the, um, the uh, die rolls. Here we go. So off we go. Ruling for weather. Axis turn two. So last video we had uh, uh, just one, uh, one player turn, uh, player turn one for both the German and the, um, uh, the Americans, and now it's player German player turn, turn two. We start off by uh, firing our machine gun at the concealed unit. We prep fire our Batuf, nine minus one liter, got a four on the IFT, and uh, it resulted in a task check. Let's see, uh, we did get line of fire, so it was a four. Um, IFT, there was a plus one, a minus one leadership DRM, a plus one LV, a plus one hindrance, and plus one TEM for a net factor of plus two. So we rolled a six on the four and um, ended up getting a task check. And so we unconcealed that unit, not more than that, and pinned them. And now we rolled snake eyes. And snake eyes will do some damage. Uh, uh, one morale check and the axis sand. Well, so much for that. And uh, somehow we ended up cowering. More prep fire, and in this case, we were firing area target type with the Yat Panther at infantry. There we get the allied sand, uh, but we the German player scored um, the hit. Uh, and the morale check is that uh, the Americans ruled their own sand. Now we're resorting to movement, and here we are using the path. And down below, we're making some progress because we have again we had broken another two AT guns broken. All right, let's move on. Here we are losing concealment, but we're rushing the Americans on the left flank. And up here, I'm guessing this is the advance phase, yep, we're advancing pretty well. 
This is only player turn two, German player turn two. Uh, now I believe what I'm doing wrong is that I am about to take a um, two German player turns as opposed to taking the American player turn. So I'm going to just load up uh, the continuation of the other log. Well, I actually might be wrong about that too. Let's see what's going on. Oh, we're already, we're taking a, an American the American turn two. So it's uh, actually the mistake that I made was on. Uh, uh, 3B or turn 3 and we're already into taking boxcars for morale checks pretty bad the Americans pin this kill stack here how much of a kill stack? Now, if I had if I had switched leaders and I put the nine minus one leader with that kill stack three MMGs. Oh, sorry, that would have been perhaps ended up differently, but uh, just the same. Drones aren't doing so badly. Um, I think the game is a bit jaded if you're playing solo because you basically know where all the hindrances are. And here's the German tanks just rushing, trying to get some uh, exit casualty points, exit victory points. Oh, yeah. I calculated that they're worth about seven points each. I'll just show you the entire log, including my mistake. X is turn three. Look at some of the rolls. Boxcars here. Boxcars on the IFT. I must have killed another support weapon. <laughs> there, there was an instance where I was playing a fellow, uh, Dennis, quite rather, uh, and. Um, all we had was a couple of Russian units, but he had a, a plethora of, of uh, German tanks, and he must have mouthed half of his OB, OB uh, with boxcars. Uh, just like here, see? <laughs> to hit 12. How did that happen? Oh, yeah, there it is. The Bofer just got it. And here we get uh, we got a nice roll on that German leader with the Bofer, and uh, he got wounded and eliminated. The wound check, yeah, other bunk swing six. Here we go again, prep firing. Now this lonely squad up here held up this this entire stack and eventually broke every squad there. Nearly uh, cost the game for the Germans. Okay, so let's let's go to three uh, B here. So I did correct the mistake that I had uh, inadvertently took two German tur turns. Here you are. Ah, the Germans already exited one AFE, and they need to exit according to the victory conditions. I then put them on the board, uh, on Neil's board. I was just reading them off the, uh, uh, sorry, reading them off the scenario card, and right off the scenario card, here it is. Got it. And it does say the Germans win immediately if they exited twelve. BP, at least four must be infantry. So that would include, because uh, they didn't specify MMCs, that would include leaders and multi-man counters. Off the south, 
edge prisoners count as zero VP. Hmm. Oh well. Um, in any case, um, I kind of recommend taking prisoners at every occasion you can, except if you are going to fight in close combat. So let's see uh, the action here. So now on the um, on the eastern edge of the map, there's not much happening here, so we'll just scroll up a little bit and see what's going on up here, okay? Let's move all along. Okay. I have taken back some mistakes. Here's the Bofer, and look at that, 12. <laughs> there goes another, another gun. Oh, well. And I was using the IFT, right? Uh, at the, they have eight firepower with a two uh, rate of fire, or you can uh, roll on the two hit and retain your rate of fire for three anyway. And, and here's the, the units that this squad here kind of knocked off one by one. They're all broken back to there. There you go. Couple of rallies. Well, this fellow here rallied. Yeah. Alrighty. And it's already German player four. And now the second tank is planning to get off the board. We turn around with the AT gun, fire in the rear, and actually got it. <laughs> Why couldn't they have done that before? Oh, yeah. Because he took off out of my line of sight. Hmm. Yeah. Give you some thoughts later on. And here's a, a 12 MC. Somebody bought, bought the farm right there. Right here, the German trying to advance on James. Oh well. Another 12 MC. The second squad gets half squatted here, in terms of German firepower. So the whole, uh, the whole eastern flank of the Germans got annihilated, uh, either by snipers or by rolling boxcars on morale checks. Boink. I'm wearing my uh, Raiders taking cap here. However, we squeezed, we found a way of squeezing through on the west edge. However, this squad, a 546 second line squad, managed to disrupt the kill stack, the German kill stack. Fortunately, there are a couple of uh, uh, squads here, German squads, that did squeeze through. And it's not by inflicting casualties on the Americans. Uh, lo and behold, a lot of the um, detrimental effects that the Americans uh, suffered here were self-inflicted. Guns blowing up, um, losing concealment and breaking. Uh, on the eastern edge of that map board, the Germans also suffered a lot of, of self-inflicted wounds, either by rolling boxcars on the morale checks or the sniper, American sniper, something like that. Maybe not the American sniper, it was just rolling boxcars <laughs> all over the place. I wonder if I, oh, here we go. The AT gun here repaired itself and it's taking a shot on a, a German that's trying to exit. Let's see what happens there. Range of six. We're probably going to fire an HE round. Uh, it's a, it, at that range, it's a base eight, three hindrances, and minus one for uh, first fire and assault movement. I didn't add the LV. I was not playing it um, with the LV all the time. Uh, I don't know, something wrong up here. What the heck? Okay, and here we are again, uh, great progress on the western flank, 
uh, they're already halfway out and there won't be any line of sight here um, okay and again we're trying to, to hit the sky and get them unconcealed and we rolled an 11 how about that here they routed forward one fellow routed back was checking to uh, line of sight to see if, if if the range was closing or not and it wasn't and we got that dude over there now it's um, ally turn five we didn't manage to rally a lot of German units what's going to happen there not much except acquisition I suppose and there we're trying to block off the uh, Germans on this uh, uh, side and over there are we firing or what advancing fire they have assault fire and again we managed to rod quite a few guys but I don't think it was enough to make a difference in the game. Remember, the Germans have already uh, 7 uh, VP. And we're doing concealment gains. And now we're going on to rally for the German turn 6. And I think at this point, this is where the Germans are going to win. There's another tw uh, boxcars for morale check. somebody but uh, bought, bought the farm again there okay so let's go on to movement and there's the first unit we checked for uh, for a, a um, line of sight we didn't have any but we got right um, at this point we're going to win so here is the shot that may win or lose the game. It was a base 8 infantry target type, but calculated 3 hindrances and minus 1 for uh, first fire and an assault movement. So that would be a 6 to hit, and I rolled a 8. No HE. Ah, I declared HE in the, for the beginning. All right, so I had to roll 7 or less. And then I rolled another 12. And here we go. Now, by the time the advance phase comes, these guys advance off the board, and we're counting them. We're counting CVP. Uh, we have seven for the, uh, I believe I have seven. Seven, uh, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. I thought I had, I thought I had fifteen. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, seven, eight, plus seven, yeah, 15. Let's move forward. Now is the end. And let's see how my dice look like in terms of stats. Oh, it doesn't show the stats now. Oh, wow. Well. well Afterthoughts. German victory, playing this game solo, I definitely regret not putting um, uh, a random uh, a, a random element to the wire and to the mines. Um, what you can do is uh, put everyone under concealment because the Germans start off bored and then randomly put the concealed encounters there but you're still going to see where the concealed units will be um, or uh, form some sort of randomness with the wire and the mines i know that with the mines it's pretty easy uh, some of them were dummy so if for example uh, that's a dummy but you don't know that it is because i i mixed them up so that's a dummy i didn't know and here that's a real mine so when you click on a real mine you can reveal that this is six factors. This was a real one as well. 
And here I avoided these mines, but they were real. I had some dummies. I'll mix up the uh, the oops. Mix up the um, uh, your squads, and maybe do like I did in the earlier videos, where you designate certain counters with A, B, C, and D, um, and the same thing with the uh, with the wire and uh, increase the number of dummies, uh, dummy mines uh, and put them randomly across the board. That will help. Uh, yeah. Uh, now, if you're actually playing this game as, uh, uh, as the um, Americans with a live opponent, opponent, there are some things to be said. So let me get the SSF. That's the starter file. So we're dealing with a clean uh, board, and I can show you what I think would be the ideal uh, setup. So here we're back. And um, in terms of the ideal setup, I would definitely uh, have a few both buffers, 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 um, possibly in the back, like so. I gotta be careful about its facing, uh, or or even well, here you won't get. Um, you need to block the this area here, and have them in the back because you're dealing with a sizable German force. So, well, sizable. Uh, I've seen, uh, you know, I've seen wor worst case scenarios. So you're dealing with. You got uh, one, two, three, and then four, five, six, seven, and then um, one, two, three, and four. So 11 units against only a few uh, American. So have definitely have the buff buffers in the back, okay? And you can shut this exit down. Um, and then as for the squads, don't forget you can deploy a bit. But is it really worth your while to deploy? Uh, I don't think so. Because uh, it's worthwhile deploying if you have, um, if you do have, a sizable, a, a, a larger force, and uh, also, um, apart from a larger force, um, some support weapons that you can distribute throughout your OB, that would help. Uh, now, in terms of the, um, in terms of the guns, um, I would definitely put them in locations where they can. Uh, afford some cover and fire and definitely concealment terrain. Now this fellow is not in concealment terrain. This would be concealment terrain, but he, he over here is in a good position to ambush the um, German armor and even better would be down here. Now why would you want to, con uh, why would you want to, uh, um, why would you want to uh, deploy. Well, let's make him into a half squad and clone. Now you got one, two, three, four, five, six, uh, six units as opposed to four before. And you can deploy these guys up front as little speed bumps in concealment terrain. And don't forget, brush is concealment terrain, so is woods. And as for the uh, three uh, AT guns, uh, you can put them in the back as well. Uh, this fellow here facing this direction. Um, so you can ambush them, ambush the German player as they're coming along. And you can also put a fellow here, like this, facing the other direction. So these guys here belong to each squad. 
And don't forget, um, you got to use hip to your advantage, right? You're, you got to set up in concealment terrain, make sure the, your guns are concealed. Uh, the German player doesn't know where they are. Uh, there's a big element of surprise. What uh, happened? What happened to my other uh, counters? Got one, two, three, uh, four. Am I missing something? Three eighty guns. Oh. Two two sevens. Five. So I got one, two, three, four. I'll just go on this guy here. I'm pretty sure I have five. Mm -hmm. That could have been another mistake that I did. All right, so yeah, set a couple of fellows up up there, um, and um, make sure you have quite a few units protecting your guns. Maybe protecting spaces where they can uh, the Germans can squeeze themselves through. James is in a bit of a pickle. There you go. Now, in terms of um, these babies, you definitely want to put something across a path, especially maybe up front where the might may enter towards the end. Uh, again, that uh, so they can uh, they'll have to uh, avoid using uh, the paths that are um, blocked by by wire like that like here and there okay and mines, you got mines galore, right? So again, mines uh, do try to uh, put them in harm's way. So if somebody is attempting to bump you, uh, or you can put the mine right after the wire. <laughs> he gets off the wire, onto the beaten path, boom. Be a little mischievous uh, as you'd like to be. Um, Yeah, right in front of them. Protect this fellow with mines. You don't have squads, but you have some mine factors. Um, yeah. In any, in any regard, you got to be very creative, and especially where you especially put. Uh, Put mines where they they might want to um, bypass in order to gain a couple of movement points. Point right there. They bypass the woods uh, instead of going into open ground. Boom, six factor attack. So you definitely have a lot of combinations uh, and permutations that you can do as the American. You don't have to despair because you only have four. <laughs> Uh, four uh, second line units to uh, seven first line Volks Grenadier slash first line squads. As the American, as as the German, definitely uh, half squad at least one unit. Um, I guess from the five three sevens. Well. Yeah, why not? The five three sevens. And hit them. No, half squad them, don't hit hit them. And then clone. There you go. And look at the scenario pack to see uh 
the actual factors for a half squat for a 537. And the reason why you want to use these guys as scouts is to observe where the obstacles are so you can uh, bypass the art, uh, obstacles, get around them. And remember, don't spend too much time trying to, uh, to prep fire like I did. Uh, it can cost you the game. And uh, essentially what you need to do is make sure that your uh, best order leaders, your best order leader is going to uh, attack with a, a good uh, amount of firepower. And don't forget Schwartz is in one of those tanks. Now, um, those are three portage points. Five plus five is eight. That's a waste of firepower. Uh, do definitely uh, consider this to be your, your your kill stack. A 538 with a, uh, an LMG and another 538 with an LMG. Now you got 16 firepower factors without any wasting of, of firepower. Okay. And um, they can still affect at long range uh, with six firepower factors down one. And use this guy as your rally slash movement motiv motivator. And uh, definitely do consider the woods to uh, go through and achieve your objectives. But the same token, if the center is left unguarded, you might have a chance as well. And the big jokers are the buffers, just like in the historical outcome. That's my two thoughts of, on this scenario. Um, I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, I kind of recovered both from my injury, but I'm still not 100% and I do get tired um, quite a bit. But I'll do my best to provide you with uh, quality content going forward. Um, if I take a little break, I'll let you know. Um, I see more people are interested in my videos with second front rather than advanced squad leader. I don't know why that is, but it's all right. Uh, in other news, I'm also working on creating my own um, ASL swag. It's not for sale. So here's my uh, my new cup, and it says here, George Yotis squad leader. Um, and it holds quite a bit more... Um, uh, coffee than before. I'm just waiting for a uh, to, to pour some enamel on it so it doesn't uh, fade. Um, and I'm going to work on its quality. Um, yeah. I am also dabbling in my other hobbies which is, you know, uh, modeling and uh, making decals on your own is part of the hobby. But uh, modeling hobby as well, so I'm working on that as well. Um, with that, uh, having having said that, um, what I'm looking forward to doing is um, doing an after action report on a old um, cross of iron scenario that I played um, using advanced squad leader rules, and it took me a heck of a long time to do. Breakout from Borisov. I, I didn't win the scenario, but it was a close game. It was a close game, and I did have a lot of takeaways from that. Um, and I played it against Mark Dennehy, and I congratulated him on his victory. I wish I could have captured his, his, his thoughts on the game because they were very valuable, but I didn't. Um, but I promise you in the next, uh, in the next uh, um, uh, game that I play with them, um, I will uh, try to um, motivate him to do, to uh, have a little powwow with me and, and record it because um, he's a, definitely a very intelligent opponent and plays the game rather well despite despite the, his frustrations with rolling boxcars sometimes. And look how many times I rolled boxcars here. You got to just take things like that in stride and... and um, you know, carry on. Having said that, guys, I ranted for 34 minutes. I know it's hard to grab your attention for more than that. So I'll end the video here. 
I'm going to wish everybody a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Hopefully, I'll have another video next week. Take care and um, roll low. Uh, enjoy the turkey. Take care, guys. Bye.